Hi, my name is Simeon White, a consultant with Solution Systems, and welcome to our webinar, Cash Flow Forecasting in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. The Cash Flow Forecasting module has been available in Dynamics NAV since the 2013 R2 version of the software. Today we're going to look at Cash Flow Forecasting in NAV 2015. First, let's talk a little about what cash flow forecasting can do for you and your organization. Cash flow forecasting is an estimate of the amount of money that you expect to flow in and out of your business during a specific period. It is, in essence, cash receipts minus cash payments. Dynamics NAV cash flow functionality includes open vendor ledger entries, purchase and sales orders, fixed assets, and more. Cash flow can also include budget lines and manual expenses and revenues. Cash flow is a prediction of liquidity for your organization. It is an estimate of what should happen with regards to the business cash flow over a user-defined period, according to user-defined parameters. With cash flow, you can set up a cash flow forecast and run it with your current month-end processes. You can even run it more often if you like, and I'm going to show you how. You can export reports to Excel, view charts in NAV, and perform in-depth analysis into your company's prospective cash flow. So let's take a look. So you can see here that I'm the accounting manager in our bicycle company here, the Cronus company. And you can start by seeing that we have this nice chart here that shows us our cash flow forecasting model. And you can have this displayed on any user's NAV. It doesn't have to be the role center accounting manager. You can have it on anyone's, as you probably already know. You can see here that there's different settings here that allow you to, to review the chart. You can look at it as accumulated cash. You can see change in cash, or you can see combined. That's the, the view that I like to look at. You can also change the period length. You can see it by quarter, by year, by month. I like that. It looks nice. You'll see here too the standard nav drilling functionality it allows you to drill into the different colored areas here. So we can drill right right in here and to see the if the cash flow forecast entries. That's our liquid funds. Go right into here. See our manual revenues. And I'll show you where all these different parameters and things come from here. So let's go ahead and dig in here. You'll notice that I have cash flow set up right here on my navigation pane. And to, through this option right here, you can see all your different options for cash flow forecast. There's only four of them. It's not a really in-depth module, so it's not that bad. So let's take a look here. Let's start at the second one, the cash flow chart of accounts. So this is pretty cool. It looks like your chart of accounts, right? At least mine does. That's how I have it set up. Great thing about it is you can set it up any way you want. It doesn't have to look like your chart of accounts. But probably good practice to have it with the same numbers and names so you know where things come from. So let's take a look at some of these. Where do these come from, right? Building, building occupancy costs. That'll definitely impact cash flow. Take a look here. You'll see right here on the GL account filter parameter that it comes from between 65100 and 65300. Drill right in there and see where it comes from. So you set these up as a user and you set up your cash flow chart of accounts one time. There's one cash flow chart of accounts for the cash flow forecasting. Once you have it all set up, and we'll go ahead and look at some of these. So, financial assets. Where does that come from? Take a look. Let's look at the numbers. 0040. That's a manual revenue. Manual revenues you set up. Remember, we're predicting our cash flow. So how do we make our cash flow prediction? By putting predictions in here. We predict that we're going to get $6,200. Let's take a look in there deeper. 
So take a look in here a little deeper. 0040 is on a recurrent frequency of one month between January through December for $6,200 a month. So that's how much we're getting for it. That's what's going to flow into your forecast. If you want to mess around with this a little, simply go in here and change it. And you change it to 6400 7000 Make it whatever you want. It's just a forecast. It's not like you're going to actually be doing anything with it other than predicting. Let's look at some more things in this cash flow chart of accounts. Receivables. Where do those come from? Don't see them. Don't see where it's coming from here. There's no account filter. Not in my manual revenues. Not in my expenses. Ah, let's look in here. Cash flow setup. Cash flow setup. You can see here all the receivables for the cash flow account come from right here 1010, 0010, and then the sales accounts, purchase account, fixed assets. This is where they all come from. And you'll notice also, if you want, you could just leave fixed assets out. Some companies don't have to deal with fixed assets as part of their cash flow forecast. So once you have your cash flow chart of accounts all set up, you have all these coming from somewhere. And I might add, there's a lot of different options in here. You can change totaling, source types, all kinds of things. Once you have your cash flow chart of accounts set up, how do you get into it? How do you, where does this come from? You can drill into this, but where did it come from, right? How did it get populated in here? It comes from the cash flow forecast. I have one cash flow forecast. It's probably best that you start with just one. Well, you can have as many as you like. Start out with one cash flow forecast. That's the best option, I think. You can have as many as you like. You might want to check different scenarios. You might want to have them set up. Look at all these different options here. And we'll go through some of these. So in my forecast, I'm looking at the GL budgets. Yeah, you can use budgets in this too. And I'm also looking at the manual payments from January to December. How does it all work? Well, let's take a look. Pretty nifty. Start by opening your cash flow forecast and hitting your cash flow worksheet. Empty. There's nothing there. So what do I do? Suggest so worksheet lines. When you press adjust worksheet lines, it runs a batch. And again, more parameters that the user can change here. Here's your forecast that we're using, right? We have, this is the only one we have set up. No other one we can select. But I'm going to keep liquid funds, receivables, sales orders. Remember all these things from our setup? They're all going to be included in this worksheet. I can keep budgets in it. I can keep budgets out this time. Let's make it easy. So I press select suggest worksheet lines. It's going in, you can see there, it's pulling everything in from the system. Notice here, you can't drill into these. Why not? Because you can change them. You can go right in here and say, you know what? I don't want to include this invoice in my cash flow. Remember, it's just a forecast. You can export this to Excel, save it, manipulate it, all kinds of things. And then when you're ready, 
you hit register. When you hit register, what does it do? It's going and it's populating that cash flow chart of accounts. It's going to clear out here. There you go. Now we'll go back in. There's our cash flow chart of accounts. Let's take a look at that again. I want to show you something interesting here. Let's suggest worksheet lines. So we've suggested our worksheet lines in here in our worksheet. Let's go back and look at our cash flow chart of accounts. Mm, notice everything zeroed out. Let's go back to our home screen. Here's our nifty chart. It's gone. Yeah, actually it is. It's gone because whenever you have this cash flow worksheet populated here, the system assumes that you're in here working on this. You're getting this ready to send it off. So, some people might ask, cash flow forecasting, is it real time? Is it looking at the different invoices and the purchase documents and sales documents? It's not. It's fixed. And the reason being is because you as the user might change this and manipulate it here and send it to it. Remember, it's just a forecast. And then when you're ready, hit register. The lines go in. I think it's a good, good idea to send this to Excel and keep it with a date on it. So you know the changes you made to it. Because that's the whole point of this, right? To change it. Let's look again at the manual revenues and expenses. So personnel costs. So this is interesting, right? We have $130,000 in personnel costs. What if during our period, we want to change it? Let's take a look at what those personnel costs look like on our graph. So our personnel costs here on our graph can be looked at if I can find it over here to negative $130,000, right? Hmm. How does that affect our cash flow? Well, you can see how that affects our cash flow. It's a big change. So let's go through and just change it. So you know what? Maybe we're not going to get that big order. I'm going to cut off $100,000. Easy as that. We'll go back in. Cash flow forecasts. Cash flow worksheet. Suggest your worksheet lines. register. And you can see big change, right? 30,000, not 100,000. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in accumulated cash over the period that we have selected here. So you can see, and I hope that your examples are way more complex than I know they're going to be. I'm just going through some real simple ones here. Let's look at another interesting thing about this. Let's look at our customers. So every customer and vendor has payment terms, right? New Concepts Furniture. Let's see what their payment terms are. Payment Terms Code. 14 days. Great. They're going to pay us in two weeks. Well, not so fast. Sometimes they don't pay us in two weeks. Actually, they're such a big customer that they pay us every three months, even though their terms are set up as 14 days. But they are such a large customer that we just have to live with it. So, while well, we have 14 days on the books, we want to set up what we have here, the cash flow payment terms code. You can change this, and you can set it up for whatever you want, just like a regular payment terms code. 
Maybe they're not that bad. Let's set them up for one month. And again, you can define those payment terms codes however you like. Now let's go back to our cash flow forecast. Open it up. You'll see this option here, consider cash flow payment terms. What this does is this uses the cash flow payment terms on your customer and vendor when checked. If it's unchecked, it uses the standard cash flow payment terms. Pretty handy. Let's keep it checked. Let's go back to our worksheet. Suggest worksheet lines. Now remember, while you're in here, you can edit anything you like. And a real good idea probably to send this to Excel, just for your record so you know what you changed. Register. Let's go back and take a look at our chart now. Pretty nifty. Let's go back and review. We've covered a lot of ground. Let's go through the departments menu this time. Go to departments, cash flow. From here you can see all the lists, tasks, reports and analysis, archive and administration associated with the cash flow forecasting functionality. This is a good way to get to the cash flow setup. Remember, in your cash flow setup, this is where the information for your receivables, payables, sales order, service, purchase, fixed assets come from. You can also change number series, but we'd recommend that you don't. Why would you really need to, right? And remember, like I have here, we're excluding fixed assets. You don't have to have any of these in here. Maybe you don't want to have your receivables included. Maybe you don't want your payables included. Just keep them out. Remember, it's just a forecast. Cash flow chart of accounts. Remember, we set all this up, configured it how we liked. Total of cash receipts, go in here and see that it's totaling. These GL accounts, all these right here. Running costs, this is coming from our cash flow manual expenses. Manual revenues and manual expenses, this is where you really get to play. What if you had extra revenues? What if you had extra private investments during this period? $300,000 every month. What if you added more expenses? What if you bought that machine that you really wanted for your place of employment? What if your organization grew and you had more expenses? All really good reasons to use cash flow forecasting because you can go in here without affecting anything and try these different scenarios. You can have as many different cash flow forecasts as you like. You can have different scenarios. Let's go back in here and look again. One really important tool is the reporting, right? Count schedules. That's what we really like to see. Remember, when you do reporting with cash flow forecasting functionality, you can use Excel. You can use jet reports, you can make your own account schedules, and it also comes with a pretty good out-of-the-box account schedule right here. Looks pretty good. Remember, every time you register your worksheet, your cash flow worksheet, this gets cleared out and starts from scratch. So make sure to save these if you really like what they look like. Well, that about ends our presentation on cash flow. We'd really be interested here at Solution Systems to see how you use this module. So you can always call support for help, but we'd also like you to just call in and show us what you're actually doing with this. Let us see the different reports and functionality that you've created in here. Maybe we, uh, we could help you extend the module, make it even better. Thanks for joining us.